So hello everyone again. Uh, this is the third session for open source education track. And there will be a talk by Fernando uh, Coleoni, uh, who will share his experience with virtual training in the past two years. And it will give us some tips and tricks. So a little bit about Fernando. Uh, he is an agile coach and trainer at Red Hat with more than 17 years experience in project management and coaching. So welcome, Fernando. All right, thank you, Nora. Hello, everyone. So, just before, oh, yeah, yeah. Just before I will hand it over to you, I just wanted to mention that if you have guys any questions during the presentation, please feel free to use the Q and A section. So now, uh, hand it over to you. All right, thanks, Nara. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here today to maybe help you to recognize the great virtual training. Uh, and I will start things off a little bit differently, right? I will ask for your help. So hopefully you have your mobile phone next to you, or if you don't want to use mobile phone, you can use maybe just a browser, but I would like you to go to slido.com, use the number on the screen, 582124, and please tell me one word for you that reflects a great virtual training experience. I'm really hoping that this will work and I'm really hoping that something will pop up in the screen. So I will give you, you know, a minute or so, just go to slido.com and try to, okay, I see, great. Engagement, interaction, interactivity, self-directed, simple, hands-on with examples all right interesting so engagement and interaction seems to be what people are interested more short simple valuable accessible all right, so, oh great, 16 people joined. Uh, more people are joining. I'll leave this open uh, just to, to see. And uh, you will have an, another question later on. So um, I will ask for uh, your inputs as well. So great, so I can see that interaction and engagement seems to be important. People are putting fun. All right, excellent. All right, thanks for that. So, well, that's me. Uh, for you that don't know, I am Brazilian and I have been living in the Czech Republic for the last almost six years now. And I work at Red Hat. I'm an agile coach or agile practitioner. That's one side of my job where I am helping um, Red Hat technical teams to embrace, to adopt agile practices. And the other side of my job that I'm really passionate about, it's related to training delivery. I'm the training delivery lead uh, in my team. And my focus as a training delivery lead is really to help design, help deliver training that can improve how product development teams at Red Hat work. Uh, but also, you know, any team or any person at Red Hat that is interested in what we offer, um, we are there to, to help. And just to give you an idea of what uh, we accomplished in the last, I don't know, three, four years, uh, I will share this slide because it, it helps you to, to see how the talk uh, goes. So we, as a team, we have now, now nine training offerings. And two of those training offers were really created last year, so brand new. And uh, we delivered more than 150 classes in the last four years, and more than 1,700 Red Hatters participated in our classes. Uh, in the beginning, everything it was really face to face, meaning we had classes like you know in the map here. We 
people went to Australia. I was fortunate enough to go to Israel, to China to deliver training. Um, by the way, that's me on the uh, uh, right hand corner over there. Uh, and it was face to face, but everything changed um, you know, two years ago and everything went to virtual. And when I say here virtual training, we are talking about instructor led virtual training, right? So from face to face, uh, instructor led to uh, uh, instructor led, but in the virtual environment. So there is a, a trainer there, everything online. Um, so that's kind of the idea. And that's why I'm talking here about uh, virtual training, because we adapted everything in, in our offerings to the virtual environment. Uh, and uh, uh, we have been having some success, I would say. But uh, coming back to the part here that I, uh, about the, the great virtual training, I will start with one question to you, to you, right? And the question is, have you ever felt like this in a training or work, workshop before, right? So have you ever felt like this in a training or workshop before, right? Uh, and maybe it, it really goes a little bit against of what you said in the beginning, right? So the interaction or engagement, because this does not seem like engagement, right? So you were there in which you thought it would be this great training, this great workshop, uh, but you're just there listening and uh, you know, listening to the trainer or teacher or instructor go through for two hours in a row those 152 slides full of text, by the way. All of the text is over there. So not a lot of interaction, not a lot of engagement. I don't know if you had this experience before. Uh, I certainly had. And to be honest, four years ago, I was one of the, this like trainers, right? So I was there in front of people talking, people were just listening, not a lot of engagement and interaction. But actually, that's not where we want to go. Um, that and, and that's the idea here of the thinking about the great virtual training. And if I give you these two options, right? Option A and option B. Please write it in, in the chat. Which option do you think is correct? Option A or option B? Probably and hopefully you are putting that option A is the correct one. Right. And this is uh, very powerful, right? So if we know that 70% of the people that enroll in a class, in a training workshop, already know something about the topic, it should change how that training, that workshop, that class should happen, right? Because if people know, it means that they can discuss, they can share experience, right? So it, it changes and should be the same right here, right now. 70% of the people here already know something about virtual training. So you have knowledge, you have some experience about the topic, and we should use that into our, uh, to our advantage uh, if we are developing workshops uh, and, and, and training. And you as a participant should know that as well, because then it goes back to what you mentioned in the beginning, part of engagement and interaction. So. I would like to, again, ask for your help here because we do have some challenges in the training environment, specifically with the virtual classes. So again, going to the Slido that hopefully you are having it open, could you maybe rank for you what is maybe the top challenges with the virtual classes that you have experienced. Uh, so it's your own perspective, right? So first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, some of the challenges that I faced, so I put it here. So go to Slido and let's see 
some of the things moving here. Uh, lack of focus and lack of engagement. So I will wait a little bit more for more people to join here and see how things will change. I'm really interested to see what is the top one or nine people. First time we had 16 people, so I will wait a little bit more. Lack of engagement is winning, so that is a challenge. Top one, multitasking num number two, lack of focus. Interesting, the use of new tools going to the last position. All right, so these are a few of the challenges that you know we face in training and it's even more problematic in, uh, in the virtual environment. So let me jump into the next slide. So thanks for the interaction here. So as you can see, lack of engagement would be one of the main challenges in the virtual environment, but of course, in the you know in class face to face, it would be the same. I'm very interested to see that use of new tools came up at uh, the last place. So thanks for your participation. Um, yeah, so these are the challenges that I usually faced in the virtual classes. Lack of engagement is pretty much what I asked you in the beginning, right? So it's just the teacher or the trainer just talking and you are just there listening and hopefully I hope that you don't fall asleep during the, the, the training. And well, that's, a, that's definitely a big problem. Multitasking is also a big problem and it's even more problematic in the virtual environment because it's a lot easier to just open a new web browser and or get your phone or check your emails while you are in a virtual training, right? So it's a lot easier just to maybe work while you are in a, in a virtual training. So it's a lot easier to multitask and it is a challenge. The part of the cameras being on and off, you know, from a training, uh, for, from a trainer perspective, it's a little bit more difficult just because we don't know uh, if, you know, the, the person is actually there. You know, we don't see body language, we don't see anything, we have no idea, so we don't even know if the person is actually there in the class. The part of the lack of focus is just because in the virtual environment, usually we are at home, right? So some there are distractions. You know, people have kids, so they might need to do something uh, with the kids or th something happened in the house, they need to do it. Maybe you have that package to be delivered, right? So, and it happens right in the time of the class. So, you know, it's really distracting. Um, so it's difficult. And of course, we have the use of new tools when we go to the virtual environment. And uh, we need to take that into consideration as well, because we were going to use uh, you know, uh, video platforms and we might use collaboration tools. Um, and it, it, it might be difficult for some participants and we need to take that into consideration. And with these challenges, right, so that I faced, I think I was able to overcome them um, in, in a good way with trying to focus on two main things. And they are really simply breakout rooms, you know, in, in our environment and just thinking about different activities. Breakout rooms because we want people to discuss and work in smaller groups and different activities so that the people are engaged and they interact with one another and actually do stuff. And when we think about breakout rooms, right? So you can think about Zoom, Google Meet, even Ring Central, Ring Central meetings. Uh, 
but I don't know if uh, everyone ha would have access to it. They are not um, free, at least I, I know that for breakout rooms, it's, they don't have free capability. This is the open source education track. So just showing that there is this free platform out there, um, web platform called Jitsi, that you can have your meetings. And as of December of last year, they enabled breakout rooms capability. So um, it's a good uh, tool, free tool for people to use. Um, you know, if you don't want to use or you can't use Zoom, Google Meet, or any of, of these um, platforms for training. So it's out there. And the same with different activities, right? So usually, usually we can use Miro, Miro, uh, Jamboard, uh, Google Jamboard. Uh, but you know, there are alternatives, open source alternatives, free alternatives out there, like diagrams.net, OpenBoard, ScolyDraw, so that you know, people can have different um, activities. So um, free as well, things to, to consider. But going to the question that I, I actually I want to answer, uh, for you, how to recognize a great virtual training. So these are maybe the key takeaways uh, for you as a participant, or if people here are you know, teachers or trainers uh, in, in the virtual environment, think that you no, know, there needs to be a comfortable virtual learning environment, um, meaning people know what pl platforms are they using, what tools are they going to use? Expectations are really uh, met before the virtual training starts. So there is no stress about the virtual learning environment. It needs to be um, you know, the best way possible prepared before. So people going to the, the, the class, they don't are stressed out when they join. A good or a great virtual training will have participants working in small groups, right? So that's why breakout rooms are very important. And they are doing something, discussing, presenting, creating, analyzing something. So it's very important that participants do something and we move away from this idea of teachers or trainers only speak and participants only listen because 70% of the people that go into a class already know something about the topic so they can share uh, their experiences. Um, well, the focus is not on the collaboration tools, right? So a great virtual training will not focus their effort on the collaboration tools, rather on the discussion, rather on the activities. The, the collaboration tool is there just kind of a to help maybe put some uh, things into writing or something like that. And it, the great virtual training should have a variety of activities so that people are engaged, focused, and they interact with one another. Exactly what the words that you put in the beginning. And just to finalize here, how do you recognize a great training in general, right? So instructor-led face-to-face -face or virtual think that participants should be act actively doing something throughout the class. And the learning outcomes for whatever training you're joining are actually actions, right? So you are discussing, you are analyzing, you are creating, you are identifying something. And not just, you know, by the end of this class, I will or you will learn, or we, you will understand, um, because these are not observable behaviors. I, can, I, as a trainer, cannot observe you understanding unless you discuss, unless you do something, and then I can see if you understand or not. And you know, uh, a great training, participants are really learning what they need to learn. So you know, if you go to a two-hour workshop, about a topic and you spend the first 30 minutes just going through how the collaboration tool 
that you're going to use for that class works, something you know might not be um, aligned well because if you're never going to use that collaboration tool again, yeah. so uh, we, we should be focusing on what participants really need to learn. And this all comes together with they need to apply what they are learning after, right? So we prepare a workshop or prepare a, a training. And because after the training, they will do something with it. They will apply in their job. They will apply in their project. So that's how really you know, we should be thinking uh, from generally for, for what a great training could be. And all of the ideas that I I share you know, some of the concepts what I talked here actually you know came from this great book from Sharon Bowman training from the back of the room and um, to me it was a life changer in terms of training um, the way I perceived it in the way now how I do it so this is just something uh, for you to maybe help with your next virtual training how you will recognize it and that's it from my side. I think I'm on time. Are there any questions? Yes, please feel free to ask. I see some questions. Yes. So are there any hints um, that the training will be great on before the training starts? You select a pay for it. So uh, great before the training starts i'm usually looking about the learning outcomes right so if i go i want to go to a training i already look at the learning outcomes and if i see the learning outcome is just saying you no know, you will learn or you will understand this it tells me that hmm, maybe there's not going to be a lot of interaction and engagement um, and I also look from the other way, right? So uh, if I see that in the training um, abstract or what they are saying they are going to offer, there will be you know activities throughout, so kind of a hands-on way of thinking. Um, that for me is uh, actually looking quite good. And uh, if the trainer is a training from the back of the room certified trainer so i i, I would be 100 percent sure that the training would be focused on engagement interaction and people participating so hopefully that helps answering okay, thank you so there is another question uh trainings are often uh, divided between listening sections uh, and small group activities both enforces the pace uh, do you have uh, experience or opinions about incorporating self-paced sections? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the shorter, the better, right? So what usually happens is that we will have a part where we need, as a trainer, teacher, uh, present some concepts. That's for sure where we are talking. The thing to consider is that well, we as human beings, we're going to just, you know, have, uh, we're not going to, to pay attention for an hour. Our brain might be paying attention for 10 minutes. Um, and that's it. After that, we're starting to just um, you know, thinking about other things. So usually what I try to do is that part of the concepts where I speak is usually focused on 10 minutes really 15 minutes at the most where I'm talking, presenting a concept. And right after that comes an activity. It can be a one, two, three, five minute activity, simple activity, just to reinforce what I presented. And then, uh, you know, people are discussing already that. So just the divide it into shorter segments, what you have, what you could present in an hour. You just divide in shorter segments and after the you know this shorter segments let the people do something with what you presented mm -hmm. thank you we have another question so what are the techniques uh, to work with speaker's voice so uh, that he does not sound like he was partying last night too late 
so what are the can you techniques. repeat the question yeah. mm -hmm. techniques what? yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no but uh, i i didn't understand the end of the the, the question yeah. what are can the techniques repeat? to work with speaker's voice uh so that he does not sound like he was partying on a party last night too late uh there is there is no way that you can control that right because that seems like a a, a bad assumption maybe the person is parting too late last night or maybe the person is sick so i don't know um it, it's a difficult assumption to 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 reply to maybe the person is parting too late maybe the person is sick maybe the person didn't sleep well so and the voice changes Mm -hmm. Okay, thank I, you. I, I, I cannot answer that question. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question just came. Uh, what uh, were the biggest challenges in starting tutor, uh, tutor Stack? And what were the problems you had to face? And how did you solve them? Uh, I, I think the, the problems initially for me was really that, uh, you know, I was really focusing initially on really slides and just me sharing information. Uh, no, really exactly what I showed uh, in the in the beginning here. And you know, uh, for me, it was okay. But what I start doing gradually is just implementing what I shared here, right? So activities, the ways that people interact. And I just got into a facilitator kind of uh, mode where I'm just guiding people's sharing experiences, and I think it it's been successful. Fernando, thank you very much. You are a great speaker. Uh, for those of you who would like to continue the discussion, so please you can move to the Work and Adventure platform. Uh, you can meet him there. Uh, or uh, right now uh, there is a 30 minute break, uh, so there will be guided coffee tasting. So feel free uh, to uh, to move to anywhere you would love to. So thank you, Fernando, once again. All right, thanks everyone.